This week, we're going to be speculating about Citadel Color's new teaser that they released this week. We're also going to be taking a look at some new Star Wars Legion models because Mandalorian is showing up and I am super hyped. Plus, we have some new Astra Militarum to take a look at. This and more in this week's Hobby News. I'm Angela, now let's get to it. I wanna go ahead and start by speculating about what we might be getting from Citadel Color Labs because there was a teaser trailer that dropped today and it sounds like we might be getting some new paints. Now I have seen online a lot of people already speculating that maybe, maybe Games Workshop is being kind to us and giving us dropper bottles. While I do think that would be lovely, I don't think that's what this trailer is revealing. I just don't think logistically Games Workshop would want to go through the effort to have to replace not only their entire paint lines into new bottles, but also all of their paint racks, which they did just update, I think like a year ago, for not only their own stores, but also any local game stores that might also carry their products. However, I do think we are getting a new paint. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a brand new fresh paint line with a totally unique name, or if it's going to be built into either the contrast paint line or potentially the airbrush paint line. But I think what we're actually getting based off of the trailer is some sort of color shifting material. Now, if you don't know what a color shift paint is, if you've ever seen holographic cards where they shift from one color tone into another, that's essentially what I'm talking about. There's a company called Green Stuff World that already has a product line like this. And I actually think Army Painter also has some sort of color shift type paint line already out. So this isn't like brand new, but if Games Workshop is coming out with their own, it might mean we see very specific GW colors shifting into other specific GW colors, which would be very cool. It also could potentially be a metallic color line for the contrast paints. We don't have any metallics in that color line. And if you do look at the trailer closely, you do see the color shift thing that I talk about a little bit, but they also just all distinctly look iridescent or metallic, which makes me lean towards that thought process as well. Either way, I am really excited for this, whether it's a color shift paint, whether it's a new contrast metallic paint, maybe some just colored metallics, who knows? But new paints always means new opportunities for doing cool things on miniatures, and I always look forward to it. Next, we need to talk about heresy, because the Votan continue to show their heretical side because we've got Ironkin and it's a brand new model and it kind of looks like a man of iron and it is a fully autonomous robot that lives with the with the Votan with all of the uh, kin and it's apparently equal to the fleshy versions of the kin. So I'm really excited about this. I think this is going to bode very interesting things for the narrative in 10th edition. I've talked about this a little bit already where I do think something's going to happen with rogue AI and we're gonna go back to that sort of storyline. And the fact that we actually have Iron Kin who are fully autonomous robots, like I said, it just continues to push me towards that direction. I cannot wait to actually see what happens with this. I really love the model that they showed for the Iron Can. I hope there's other varieties of them too, that we don't just get this one. Um, and honestly, I hope we get some big chonky ones too, because that's always cool to paint. It's that time of the video where I interrupt to tell you about my Patreon and to let you know that we just added a Discord server, which all tiers get access to. So if you're wanting a way to chat with me, share with me your projects, or just tell me what board games you're playing, definitely make sure to check the link below and check out my Patreon.
Speaking of cool new models, we also got to take a look at what's coming for the Asher Militarum. And my goodness, I love Ursula Creed. She is amazing. Cadia still stands. She looks totally ready to walk up to Abaddon and kick him in the nuts for destroying her planet. And frankly, I love that. She's broad. She looks like a badass. I love the helmet. And there's tons of great details on this model. In particular, I love the fact that on her back, her jacket's actually torn and then you can see the armor she's wearing underneath. It's just a really nice little subtle detail that I absolutely love. If you were to wear also those tears, yeah. those are from Abaddon's claw. <gasps> I was when wondering. When her father was <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, I, that's what I was wondering, but I hadn't actually looked into it that much. That makes me love her even more. And I stand by my statement that she looks like she's ready to go and walk up to Abaddon and just kick him in the nuts. Now, that's not the only model we got to take a look at. We also got to look at the Kaskrin, I think is how they're pronounced. It's a new- Karsakin. Karsakin, apologies, Karsakin, who are a new infantry model and they look badass too. They're supposed to be quite elite running with or Ursula Creed. And honestly, they just look pretty cool. Although the thing that I am most excited about with this Astra Militarum reveal is the brand new Sentinel because he is so charmingly cute. How dare you assume the gender of the Sentinel? I apologize. It could be a girl Sentinel. Who, I, regardless, it is an adorable robot. It reminds me so much of like 80s, 90 mech. Like I kind of get apple seed slash um, ghost in the shell Tachikoma vibes from him a little bit. And I just want all of them. Games Workshop has been doing such a good job with their bigger like based models recently between all the dreadnoughts that I've been talking about, the Voton um, Walker that we've talked about, honestly, the vehicles that are coming out from Necromunda, the vehicles that are coming out for Horus Heresy. And now we've got this new Sentinel from Astra Militarum. I'm just, I'm digging all of the big models that are coming out. Manufacturer on HL7836 is heading towards a power systems failure thanks to a bit of heretic sabotage. So you're going to restore the colon and hopefully save the day. Get in, access the operations array, and use the cryonic rods to flush the system. Preferably before something explodes. Head on through the ventilation tunnels and look for an access point. This way! Move it! We're moving into the world of video games for Warhammer 40,000 because we need to talk about the new gameplay trailer for Dark Tide. It is exactly what I was hoping it would be, honestly. It looks like Vermintide 1 and Vermintide 2. Lots of great combat. Everything looks super visceral, action-packed, and super bloody. I love it. I just really cannot wait for this game to be out. And we do have an official announcement date for the game. It is coming out let me check my notes. September 13th. It's coming out September 13th, which I can only hope is a Friday. Please be a Friday. It'd be great because I love horror games that come out on Fridays. So I will be picking it up. Let me know if you will be.
We have even more miniatures to talk about, but not ones from Graham's Workshop. Nope, this time we're gonna be talking about a whole slew of new models coming from Atomic Mass Games. First, we're gonna talk about some Marvel Crisis Protocol because if you like the Asgardians, my goodness, there are quite a few sets that you are going to love. One, there is just an Asgardian set. It comes with um, Hera, I believe is her name, uh, a young Loki, and a couple of other characters as well. We also have a brilliant looking Heimendale. I absolutely adore the paint job that they did on the rainbow bridge that is surrounding him. I know it's probably Photoshopped to make it even more brilliant than it actually is, but gosh darn it, it is so vibrant and I wanna try my hand at doing a rainbow surrounding that man. It just, I think it's gonna look so cool. I mean, it already does, but that set looks really cool. Also Scourge is part of that particular set, which is neat. Now, we also have one that I'm actually very interested in, even though like color palette wise, if you look at the preview images, it is the most gray green, like brown of all of them. And that is Nick Fury Sr. and the Howling Commando. It is a nice little three set of those three men. And they just, it looks like a classic, like action scene out of a war game, like a historical war game. And I just, I kind of love it. And also I just think those characters are all great. Um, we also are getting a Baron Strucker and Arneman Zola, which I'm not super familiar with those characters. I'm not sure which one is the robot guy with a face in his chest, but my God, I love him. He just looks so cool. I just- so he's the AI from the movies. Oh, got it, got the it. Hydra AI. Oh, of course. I was like sitting there going like, where is this character from? And I didn't bother to look it up because I just was from in a Captain rush. America. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember now. I remember now. That's really cool. Honestly, might get so that set cool. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. That makes sense. So then there's also those two, but we also have randomly, this is the one that feels like the most random to me, a Captain America and an original um, Human Torch, which are cool, but they feel out of place for this particular set. I guess maybe because of um, Senior and Nick Fury and the Howling Commando, because it's set well, in like- they go with the Howling Commandos because- That makes sense. They were all World War II together. Right, right. Okay, so it's he must pair with that and one. And the Hydra guy, including the AI robot Zola, he is, I keep calling him Zola. Um, Zola. Zola, Zola. Excuse me. Um, he is also from World War II Hydra. So that's uh, the entire set is World War II Captain America. Got it. Okay, so they're splitting it between the Asgardians. Like they're doing part Asgardian and then Pat World, part World War II. I don't know why I said Pat. Part World War II. That makes total sense to me. It, the, the flow of it feels a bit better. But there's one final model that we actually need to talk about that came out in this set or that is coming out in this set. And it's my favorite because it looks so cool. And that's Malekith. Holy cow, he's riding a giant tiger with wings and I just, I want it. I want it so badly. It's just, he's a big kitty and I like it. Ah, oh, it's just, I really like the Marvel Crisis Protocol models. I've only painted a few of them, but I wanna continue painting more of them because they really just are a lot of fun. And I think the dynamism that Atomic Mass Games is getting out of their sculpts is just excellent. They continue to push themselves and I love seeing it. Last but not least, we're sticking with Atomic Mass Games and talking about Star Wars Legion because guys, guys, we officially have the Mandalorian content coming and it's wonderful. We've got Din Djarin and Grogu officially announced. We've seen the miniatures and Grogu is so delightful. There's actually two different figures for Grogu and one of them is him using the force and the other one is my favorite and it's him eating a giant frog creature and I absolutely just love it. It's so cute. I'm so glad they did that. I'm going to be very curious how Grogu's actually used in the game because he is a child character and I don't know like how much of his powers are actually going to be developed and used. I'm curious if he's going to be more of an objective or something like that rather than a playable character, but who knows? Maybe he's just going to be constantly paired with Din Djarin and will benefit him in some way, maybe giving him some bonuses. It's going to be very, very cool. Now, alongside those two, we also got an announcement of some assassin droids, including IG-88 and IG-11, who I love from the season one of Mandalorian. I am very sad for those of you that have not seen it. Spoiler alert, he dies. But it is glorious. He is an amazing character and I absolutely just want to get this set just for that figure because I'm trying to collect the ones of the figures that I like from the shows that I love. 
We also got an announcement of some swoop bike uh, riders, which look really cool. And I saw somewhere in some comments on, I think it was Instagram, that one of the designs might be from some concept art that was not used in either The Mandalorian or Book of Boba Fett. And if that is the case, I love that Disney is doing that and allowing some of the concept arts to be used in other merchandise rather than just the, you know, what it was meant for, like the TV series. Now, alongside these individual operative packs that were announced, we also got some announcements of some new starter sets, depending on what faction you might want to be into. Now, there are going to be four of them coming out, and two of them are going to be for the Age of Rebellion. So if you're a fan of that time period, you've got some winter-themed stuff coming. We've got the Echo-based Defenders, which includes Leia and a bunch of winter-themed rebels. And then we have the Blizzard Force, which is going to be your Empire version of the winter-themed guys. I think it's a bunch of um, snow stormtroopers, which looks really cool. We also have two sets coming from the Clone Wars era. And honestly, they both very much intrigue me. The first one is the 501st, which of course includes Anakin along with a bunch of clone troopers. And I love them. I just want that set. Again, they are some of my favorite characters from the Clone Wars series and I just feel like I need to own them. The other set is going to be Separatist Invasion set, which includes General Grievous, along with a bunch of droids, including one AAT, which I was not expecting a tank to necessarily be in it, but I love seeing that. So if you are interested in Star Wars Legion, you're wanting to jump in with an easy way to just build up an immediate force to play with, these might be good ones to pick up once they're out. All right, that has been it for this week in Hobby News. We have some paint speculation. We got to see a ton of new models, both from Warhammer 40,000, as well as from Atomic Mass Games. And frankly, I love seeing it. I just, there's so many cool figures out there for us as hobbyists to paint, and I love continuing to see even more of them come out, especially of characters that I think are really, really cool. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Before I head out, I do want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for making it so content like this continues. For making it so content like this continue to happen. Without your guys' support, we would not be doing this. So thank you very, very much. I have been Angela, and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night.